Hey, greetings, we're doing thermal energy right now, so let's go ahead and use our fill-in notes to get started. So, what about thermal energy? What's up with the temperature versus heat? Well, temperature is related to the average kinetic energy of the particles in a substance. Of course, if you look at the picture down there, you can see we've heated a, a horseshoe in the fire and look at the particles, how quickly they're starting to vibrate and move around. But here is just a regular horseshoe that's been cooled. Notice the particles are definitely not moving as fast and are not vibrating as much. So, let's talk about temperature. When you measure temperature, you are measuring the average motion of the atoms, how fast those particles are actually moving back and forth. Temperature depends on the kinetic energy. And of course, kinetic means motion. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. The faster the particles of matter move, the more kinetic energy that you're going to have. So that means the higher the temperature, the faster the atoms move. The lower the temperature, the slower the atoms move. Remember when we were talking about that with our gas laws, and we talked about the tire in the summertime on your car. You don't want to overinflate it because as the car tires move faster, and of course the friction on the road causes the particles inside to move faster. And of course that's more kinetic energy, so that's going to increase the temperature of the tire. The lower the temperature, the slower the atoms move. That was Charles's law when we talked about uh, our bike tire, our football, and it sits out in the garage in the wintertime and we go to get it, and it's soft. It's kind of deflated a little bit. That's because there's not as much kinetic energy because it's colder outside, lower temperature, so the atoms are moving slower. So what is thermal energy? Thermal energy is defined as the total kinetic energy of all the particles that are within an object. Basically it's energy of heat if that's how you want to sum it up. And you can look at this picture right here. Here's a thermal image of a student holding a ball. You can see where the heat is. is up by their eyes, around their neck where it's been exposed. And of course where he has his shirt on you don't see as much but there's his inside of his elbow there. Uh, so that's definitely picking up the thermal energy within his body. How does thermal energy move? Well, first of all, heat. Heat is the flow of thermal energy from one object to another. Heat always flows from the warmer object to the cooler objects, always. So look up here. We look at this cup, all right? Then you can see the steam coming off, so it's warm. So we have like hot chocolate in there. The cup's going to get cooler while the hand gets warmer because the heat is always flowing from the warmer objects to the cooler. The hand is cooler, so the heat from the cup is going to come here. The outside air is cooler, so the heat is also going up into the air. That's where it ends up going. Now look down here, the ice cube. The ice gets warmer while the hand gets cooler because the heat from your hand is flowing to the cooler ice cube. So that's why your hand is feeling colder because that heat is flowing out of your hand to the ice cube. All right, so that's the movement of thermal energy. Now, there are some conductors and insulators. What's a conductor? A conductor is any substance that transfers thermal energy well, where an insulator is a substance that does not transfer thermal energy well. Think of some good conductors, things like metals. Look at all these metals here. These are things that conduct energy well. Put a spoon, a metal spoon, on the stove it's going to get hot and you go to touch it it's going to be really hot insulators are things that don't transfer energy well so think about things like oven mitts fiberglass insulation ceramic bowls um, other things would include styrofoam and plastic and rubber these are all things that don't allow the transfer of energy uh, you go to the the football game and they give you hot chocolate in a styrofoam cup. The styrofoam cup is not scalding hot because it's an insulator. It can't transfer that thermal energy very well at all. All right, so we've got two flashcards to do and that includes temperature and thermal energy and then we are done with these notes and then we'll do some classroom experiments or activities uh, to reinforce thermal energy.